Hello, this is Joe Ix, Professor and Chief of the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension at UC San Diego. I'll be discussing the publication, The Chronic Kidney Disease Mineral Bone Disorder, CKD MBD, Advances in Pathophysiology by Keith A. Ruska and colleagues. This study report was published in Bone. I selected this article to discuss because it provides an understanding of the new findings in the pathogenesis of CKD MBD. New advances in the causes of CKD MBD are discussed, including the discovery of Wnt inhibitors, as well as the repair and disease processes in the kidney related to the uh, factors in the circulation that cause the systemic complications of CKD. This recent study demonstrates circulating renal repair and injury factors are a source of the CKD MBD and CKD associated cardiovascular disease. Key findings. Studies demonstrating circulating renal repair and injury factors promotes CKD MBD and CKD associated cardiovascular disease. Three novel cardiovascular risk factors, which include hyperphosphatemia, vascular calcification, and elevated FGF23 levels have been discovered within the CKD MBD. Various forms of kidney disease increase renal expression of Wnt inhibitors, including DCOPS1 or DKK1, which is the only critical Wnt inhibitor in the kidney and known to be stimulated in diabetes. Wnt inhibitor proteins, nephrogenic circulating factors reactivated in renal repair are critical for tubule epithelial reconstruction. Discovery that activin A, a second renal repair factor, circulates in increased levels during CKD. Activin A derives from peritubular myofibroblasts of diseased kidneys, where it, is, where it stimulates fibrosis and decreases tubular clotho expression, and has been found in the skeleton to be responsible for CKD stimulation of osteoclastogenesis and bone remodeling, increasing bone turnover. The review discusses two forms of vascular calcification stimulated by CKD, intimal and medial calcification. Clotho expression is significantly reduced by kidney injury, and studies show that the reduction of clotho is related to activin and activin type 2A receptor, also known as ACTR2A, signaling. Clotho deficiency limits its regulation of FGF23 production and leaves hyperphosphatemia as the principal regulator of FGF23 secretion in CKD. In addition, recent mechanistic studies have directly linked clotho deficiency with cardiovascular disease. In CKD, osteoporosis may be observed with either high turnover or low turnover renal osteodystrophy. With progressive loss of renal function, Bone strength suffers despite an increase in mass detected by dual energy X-ray absorptiometry, or DEXA. FGF23 levels rise prior to changes in calcium, phosphate, or PTH levels and are now recognized as one of the earliest detectable biomarkers of the CKD MBD. FGF23 levels are associated with cardiovascular risk in CKD and kidney, kidney transplant loss and mortality. Fallen colleagues uh, did a study showing that FGF23 is a direct pathogenic factor causing left ventricular hypertrophy through activation of a calcineuron NFAT pathway in cardiac myocytes. Studies by Andrukhov et al. have shown that FGF23 promotes calcium reabsorption through stimulation of apical calcium entry channels, TRPV5, in the distal tubule. Vitamin D deficiency is shown through calcitriol deficiency, decreasing intestinal calcium absorption, leading to hypocalcemia and diminished tissue levels of vitamin D receptors, which result in resistance to calcitriol-mediated regulation and stimulation of PTH secretion, leading to secondary hyperparathyroidism. In summary, these recent translational discoveries introduce a new paradigm, a new paradigm where kidney injury directly leads to skeletal and cardiovascular injury through the production of pathogenic circulating factors during attempted renal repair, including mo molecules that inhibit the canonical Wnt pathway and activate activin, which can lead to chronic allograft injury and cardiovascular disease. 
here are my thoughts and analysis of this study. So to highlight the main points of this study from my perspective, this study provides a nice summary of the standard factors that are alterate, altered in CKD MBD, including elevated FGF23, phosphate, PTH, and other factors. Within this known context, the authors describe new discoveries regarding elevated serum levels of Wnt inhibitors, particularly DKK1, which are released into the circulation in CKD animals and how these factors may promote the CKD MBD, including vascular and bone effects. How do the results of this study impact the current state of patient management? While the review doesn't directly influence patient management, it gives new insights into crosstalk between the kidney and the vasculature and bone. As DKK1 is elevated in serum and its neutralization may limit some aspects of the CKD MBD, the work may lead to new treatment targets in the future. How do the results of this study impact future state of patient management? The review provides new insights to how signals from damaged kidneys influence vascular calcification and bone morphology. This may provide new tar uh, targets for treatment to limit the CKD MBD in future studies. What questions remain unanswered? The exciting findings from this work comes from rodent models of CKD. Future studies are required to determine the relevance of these findings in humans with CKD and with acute kidney injury. Future work is also required to determine if blocking DKK1 or other Wnt inhibitors is a viable and safe strategy in humans and what, whether such strategies translate into improvements in vascular and bone health in patients living with kidney disease.